Titanic was released in December of 1997. Many Hollywood insiders and naysayers predicted doom for the film. After all, it had cost a record $200 million to produce, the story had been told on film more than once, everyone already knew the ending, and the film really had no big stars to draw in the crowds. Originally, the lead role was actually to go to Matthew McConaughey in order to provide star power, but director James Cameron and Kate Winslet both pushed for DiCaprio to get the role. After making a good but not incredible $28 million in its opening weekend, momentum and great word of mouth quickly set in. Titanic soon set a never-to-be-broken, highest-grossing film record that was, in fact, soon broken by Avatar. It was the number one film at the box office for an unbelievable 15 weeks in a row. Titanic eventually grossed a record $600 million in the United States alone in its first run. It became the first movie to gross over a billion dollars worldwide, and after the recent 3D re-release, it's up to $2.187 billion. It wasn't just a hit in the Western world, though. Something about Titanic tugged at the heartstrings of Afghan boys in a way no other American love story ever had. Previous to this, most Hollywood movies that made it big in Afghanistan were almost exclusively action movies, with Rambo 3 probably holding the title for most popular American movie in Afghanistan. Despite the Taliban's strict ban on American cinema, VHS copies of Titanic flooded Kabul's back markets. Titanic mania it swept the country and had a resurgence after the Taliban were removed. Before the crackdown and after the government was overthrown, posters of the film could be seen hanging on countless Afghan walls. Even extra-large vegetables, from tomatoes to cucumbers, started to be referred to as Titanic vegetables. There was also Titanic mosquito killer, Titanic body spray, Titanic toothpaste, Titanic sandals, Titanic wedding cakes… you get the idea. One fabric seller in Kabul, Ali Ahmad, states, Still, everyone plays Titanic, because the story is good. It's a real story. That's why people still like it. And the love parts, that's what we like. But alarm bells didn't start going off for the country's fundamentalist government until teenage boys started emerging from downtown barbershops sporting DiCaprio-style Titanic haircuts. This incited the rage of the Taliban, and soon the police started cracking down. Numerous teens and at least 30 barbers were arrested because of the DiCaprio cut. Others were simply beaten and forced to shave their heads. Because of this, many Afghan boys sporting the new cut took to wearing hats, caps, or turbans to hide their manes when they were in public. Older young men, yes, we just said that, actually grew beards to try to blend in better while sporting their Titanic cuts. Brave barber Aminullah Nassif, who never actually saw the film, was not to be dissuaded though and started giving out the Titanic cut in secret with the first customer he had, who requested it showing up with a Leonardo DiCaprio postcard and asking to be given the Titanic cut. Nassif became a popular underground barber among Titanic-loving male teenage customers, with many of his customers arranging to meet at his shop late at night to get their Titanic haircuts. As one 16-year-old Nawid Merkhal, who got the Titanic cut but then was forced to have it shaved off, said, I like the hairstyle of the film star. He was a handsome boy, and he looked very handsome with that haircut. While every movie star is probably at some point flattered by imitations of himself or herself, DiCaprio may be the only movie star in history whose followers risked a physical beating and a potential arrest for imitating his hairstyle. So I really hope you found that video interesting. As always, please do hit that like button if you did. Also, we've got a new merch store with some cool stuff in it. If you uh, want to check that out, you'll find a link to it below. And we're working with a really cool company who do this stuff. So if you've got a random idea for a merch item, hit me up on Twitter at Simon Whistler and let me know what your thoughts are and I'll see what we can do. And as always, thank you for watching.